Hello, welcome to Enjoy Marital Bliss. I am Pastor Judy Daniel Imagoro, and thank you so much for tuning in today. I'll be sharing with you quickly on five things wise wives do. I say that again, five things wise wives do. I want to encourage you if you know any wife around the world or you know wives to be, please share this broadcast with them. It will be a blessing to them. My passion is to bring God's original intent for marriage to families around the world so that we can save as many homes as possible and save children from the brokenness of divorce. So please partner with me and pass this message on. And if you choose to do that, God bless you. So now let us go to the message. I want to tell you I have some audience in my studio today so you might hear their voice and that's just okay so five things wise wife do number one a wise wife understand understand the power of honor and honor her husband a wise wife understand the the power of honor and honor her husband your honor brings out the man and the god in your husband and you hear you heard that well the God. Every man have a God in him. And you know what God did? He put something in you that will help to push out that best out of him. So honor is that thing that you give to your husband and the strength in him will come out. The peace in him will come out. The joy in him will come out. The God in him will come out. Why? So that I can serve your family well. It does not do your family well when you begin to spread your husband's dirty linen outside. Because most of the cases, you cannot repair it. And let's think of it. The people who you share those things with, they cannot help you. They cannot change him. So it is wise for you to go to the God who can change him so that he can best serve your family well. And I want you to know, even if your husband tend to do things that are not wise, a wise wife, when you honor your husband, you bring out the God in him so there will no longer be foolishness in him. I share this with you. Between Queen Vashti and Queen Esther, one thing was different, honor. One choose to honor a foolish king and the other choose to despise a, fool, a foolish king. Because of a wise woman, Queen Esther, God was able to use a foolish king to, say, to serve and save a whole nation. So that's what happened when you honor a man. The goodness come out of him, peace come out of him, strength come out of him. So I want to encourage you more than ever before, honor your husband. It will bring out that same thing you're seeking. The reason why you're complaining, if you honor him, God will bring out those things from him. And the man who used to behave in a certain way that you do not like, begin to behave in a fantastic way. So wise wife honor their husband. And number two thing that wise wife do, a wise woman understand a helper role and stand in the gap in prayer for her husband. So you were created to be a helper to your husband because God knows he cannot do it alone. So the need, he, that means a man had a need. That's the reason God did not only create a companion for him, but he said, I will make him a helper. So a wise woman knows he will, he, she should stand in the gap in prayer for her husband. Why is that? Because you're joined together. Anytime you see two things are joined together, that means they can flow into each other. If two rivers are joined together, they will definitely flow into each other. And now the Bible says he is the head. So it means that there is no way that anything flows from the head and it will not get to the bottom. It will definitely flow down. So a wise wife knows if the husband fails, she fails and her children fails. So a wise woman will stand in the gap to ensure her husband is covered and her husband can function in the role that God gave to him. So wise women stand in the gap for their husband. They do not complain, they pray because they understand that they have a God 
who is able to change and who is able to use and equip this man to become the priest that he is supposed to be. Also, a wise woman understands that the man is the head of the family, and that means he's an obvious target. So because of that, she is wise enough to protect her head so that there will be peace in the family. I share a test with you. I, find, I found out this test way before I got married, and it helped me in choosing the right spouse because what you choose as a woman is what you have to live with. So I will share that test with you is in Matthew, 9, Matthew chapter 18, 23 to 25. And I will read, it said, therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle account with his servants. And when he had begun to settle account, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And both he was not able to pay his master commanded that he be sold. Please take note of this. He be sold with his wife and all that his children and all that he had and payment be made. Did you hear that? Who owned the money? The husband. Who were sold? Him, his wife, and his children. So that means there is no way your husband will be targeted and you will be free. So now become a wise wife by standing in the gap for him so that you are safe, your children are safe, and he's safe. Also remember the story of, story of Haman in the book of Esther, where Haman, Haman plotted evil against Mordecai. In the end, what happened? When he was about to be hanged, he was hanged, his wife, and his children. So a wise woman know that there is power in her nails and she do everything possible to stand in the gap as a helper and save the herd of her family. So another thing that wise women do, the number three, so we're talking about five things wise wife do. So number three, a wise wife understand her husband's sexual need and satisfy it. Now sex, is your husband's strongest need. Did you hear that? Sex is your husband's se uh, strongest sexual, strongest need. Why? It brings him great fulfillment. And so as a wise woman, you should understand that and diligently satisfy it. God deliberately put that need in your husband so that you will always be relevant. So he put the need for you so that you will always be needed. And it's been known that men have a higher, most men have a higher sexual drive than women. So now if you are that woman that have a very low sexual drive, what should you do? You have to learn to come up for him. And how do you do that? You begin to think of sex. The word of God says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as a woman thinketh in her heart, so she will be. So think about sex. And when you think about sex, you find out that over time, your body is ready for him. So when you know it's time for you to, if you know the day or however he comes to you, begin to think about it so that you will be in that mood when he wants it. And so identify that and satisfy it. Never use it as a weapon against him. And never ignore that need. If you ignore the need, what you do is to put your family in danger because he just can't help himself. It's a need that is in him and God gave it to him. So you have to ensure that you know it and then you're satisfied. Then another thing wise wife do is not to allow offenses to rob her marriage of intimacy. So what will she do? She forgive. A wise woman will forgive her husband. Why should she do that? Because she understands that that will become a war for the enemy to come into their marriage. So you, under, you, you should understand that and learn to forgive your husband. Then note this. When it comes to sex, the way your bedroom looks is very important. So never, ever ignore this. 
sex start by the way your bedroom look. So you should pay attention to that so that you make your room be sexually ready. Your room should smell well. Your room should be well organized for the purpose of that. So that it becomes a dwelling place. It's somewhere you be naturally just feel like wrapping your hands over each other because the room is ready. So now you don't have to be rich to do this. You can use what you have before, but just if you don't know how to go on YouTube, find out how to make a beautiful room or how to make a, make a makeover, bedroom makeover. And then you do that. And the way you place things, just the way you rearrange things can make your room sexually ready. It's very important that you know that and you don't need money to achieve this. Just make your room clean arrange your things well, and that's, that will make your room cozy, that will make your room sexually ready. Number four thing that wise wife do, a wise wife dressed to feed her husband's eyes. It's very important, never ignore this. There is no man's eyes that grow old. No matter how old a man's eyes is, that no matter how old a man is, his eyes does not grow old with him. So it means that he still appreciates a beautiful woman, no matter how old. So ensure that those things that attracted him to you, you keep those things. Never ignore the way you look or never take his sight for granted. It's very important you know that. You keep yourself clean, keep yourself, you dress well for him so that he can keep appreciating you. A wise wife knows that he, her body should smell well. It's very important. A wise wife knows she should dress well for her husband so that she will always be that young girl that he married. Number five, and this is the last story we're taking today. A wise woman never compare her husband with another. And a wise woman never join her husband in any error. It's very important that you do that. If your husband does things that you know is not right, you should be the number one person to tell him the truth. Why? We said it before, you're joined to him. Any seed he sow, whether positive or negative, it comes to you and it comes to your children. So if you're someone who is mindful of your future and mindful of your children's future, never join your husband in an error. And two, Never compare your husband with another because when you compare him, somehow you put pressure in him to begin to do things that he would naturally not do. So you need to compare your husband with your husband, not with anything else. How do you compare someone with someone? Is you try as much as possible to bring out the best in him, not comparing him with another person. That way you keep your family happy and you encourage him to do the right things. There are a lot of people around the world today that are going through hardship, not because of what they did, but because of the seed of their forefathers. And they keep dealing with that. You don't want your generation there. And there are also a lot of people who are not that smart, but anything they put their hands to do just work. Why? There have been positive seed sold for them and they are just enjoying that seed right now. A wise woman does not only think of today, she thinks of tomorrow. So think of the tomorrow of your children. Think of your tomorrow. Think of legacy. That is why you are in this life. And remember, you are a helper. So one of the things that God placed you in his life to do is to ensure you bring him back to him. So your journey, your assignment in your husband's life is a ministry. What is that ministry? Help him to fulfill God's plan on earth. Help him to make eternity. That's your job. And you can't do that by joining him in error. You can't do that by comparing him with another. So thank you so much for watching this broadcast today. Please join me, spread this message with your friends and your family. And also I want to introduce this book to you, wherever you are, Turning Marital Crisis into Bliss. I encourage you, there will be a link below this video. You can purchase it. It will be a blessing to you. You will understand your husband, understand your spouse, whether a male or female. You will understand the purpose of marriage. You will know how 
you you can you will know how to forgive and the role says play in marriage there's so much more you can learn from this book so i will link below the link for you to purchase it and i want to remind you subscribe to my youtube channel at judith imagro ministries like and follow my facebook page at judith imagro ministries and let me tell you there's another way you can partner with us do you know you can give to judith imagro ministries with your giving, we are able to touch many lives as possible. So I will also put a link below this video where you can sow from anywhere in the world. You can use that link to give and God will bless you as you do this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see, I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.